Hello everyone. Let us move towards another numerical on capital structure. XYZ Limited has currently an ordinary share capital of 250 lakhs consisting of equity shares of rupees 100 each. <coughs> it means that the company has already got a capital worth 250 lakh rupees only made up of equity shares in which each share's price is 100 rupees. The company is planning to raise another 200 lakhs for financing a major expansion program. Yes, so there is another requirement of 200 lakh rupees for the company which it is planning through the four options. It has to select either of the options. What are the four options? Let us have a look at. First option is Entirely through ordinary shares. Ordinary shares as in the equity shares. So one option is that the company can raise whole fund through equity shares only. Second could be 100 lakh rupees out of 200. 100 lakhs through ordinary shares and balance 15% term loan. Which means 100 lakhs in the form of equity shares and balance 100 lakhs by a term loan at the rate of 15%. So it is 50 lakh rupees through ordinary shares and 150 lakhs through long term borrowings at 15 percent. Now here see in option 2 there was 100 lakhs through equity shares and 100 lakhs at 15 percent loan. Here instead of 100 lakhs of equity here you have only 50 lakhs of equity shares and 150 lakh rupees in the form of loans. And fourth option is 100 lakhs through ordinary shares, 100 lakhs through preference shares with 14% dividend. So here instead of term loan in the fourth option they are considering the preference dividend. So out of these four options you have to make a decision which option should be selected and for that on what basis it has to be selected is given the expected EBIT that is earnings before interest and tax is 80 lakh rupees. So calculate EPS. EPS is again earnings per share under each alternative and advise the company about the most beneficial alternative. Income tax rate can be taken as 50%. So you have to calculate earning per share under each option, under each alternative and then decide which option suits better, better for the company. It has to be done on the basis of EPS. Let us go to the solution. See, we have made five columns over here. We have particulars, alternative one, which is raising whole 200 lakhs from ordinary shares. Alternative two is ordinary shares of 100 lakhs and balance term loan at the rate of 15%. Third alternative, 50 lakh rupees ordinary shares and 150 lakh rupees term loan. And fourth alternative, 100 lakhs ordinary shares and 100 lakhs preference shares. Yes. Now these are the options. Yes. So what are we going to do is out of these four alternatives we have to select which one is the best. And how do we select that which alternative is the best? By calculation of EPS earnings per share. And this is the typical format for calculation of earnings per share. This is, this is also called as an income statement. The first element over here we have is earnings before interest and tax EBIT earnings before interest and tax which is given to us as 80 lakhs so which would be same for all four options 80 lakhs 80 lakhs 80 lakhs and 80 lakhs now second thing is always remember from your EBIT first thing that you deduct is your interest so what is the interest in this case when see there is no existing loan there are there is no new loan in case if you go with alternative one so there, is, there would be no interest element if you select alternative 1 because there is no loan as such. There is no borrowing. So there would be the interest would be nil. In case of alternative 2, you have ordinary shares of 100 lakhs and balance term loan of 100 lakhs at the rate of 15%. We have already seen the interest rate is 15 lakhs. So 15% 15 of 100 lakhs loan becomes 15 lakh rupees per year. That's the interest. Alternative 3, 
Now the borrowed money here is 150 lakh rupees. 15% of 150 lakh becomes 22,50,000. Borrowing is 150 lakhs and 15% is the rate of interest. So the interest becomes 22,50,000. That is 15% of 150 lakhs. So it is 22,50,000 rupees. And in fourth option, you are raising it through equity shares and preference shares. So again, there is no interest. So your interest is nil. After deducting these interest from the EBIT, what do we get is that is called as earnings before tax. Now the I letter has gone, the interest has gone now. So here you have EBT as 80 lakhs, 65 lakhs, 57 lakh, 50,000, and 80 lakhs for the four options. Now coming to the income tax because this is earnings before tax. So what is yet to be deducted? It is the tax element. The tax rate is given to us as 50%. So we'll straightforward deduct 50% of EBT. Again, remember this thing. This is 50% of your EBT and not 50% of EBIT. Okay. So it is 50% of EBT, 80 lakhs. So that's 40 lakh rupees. Balance becomes 40 lakhs. Out of 65 lakhs, 50% is 32 lakh 50,000. So balance is 32 lakh 50,000. 57 lakh 50,000, 50% 50 is 28, 75,000. So balance is the same. And here again 40 lakhs, 40 lakhs. So what is balance after deducting tax is called as earnings after tax. Earning after tax is also called as profit after tax. It is also called as the net profit. Out of this now, the next step is after you have got this earning after tax, you have to deduct the preference dividend. What has to be deducted is the preference dividend. Now, we have already seen in the first three alternatives, there is no preference capital. Preference shares are not there. So, preference capital is there only in last case. That is 100 lakh rupees preference shares at the dividend and the dividend rate was 14%. So, 14% 14 of 100 lakh is 14 lakh rupees. That is the preference dividend over here. You deduct it from here, you get 26 lakh. And these balances remain the same. Now what is this? Once you deduct the preference shares dividend from EAT, the balance amount is available for the equity shareholders. The balance amount is available for the equity shareholders. This amount is now the ownership of the equity shareholders. So when we have to calculate earnings per share, we have to deduct this amount that is earnings of equity by number of equity shares to get the EPS. So it would be 40 lakhs upon 4 lakh 50 thousand. When you divide it, you get 8.88. .88. That is earning per share under alternative 1. The second alternative, that is 100, 100 lakh equity shares, 100 lakhs loan, it becomes 9.28. If you go with 50 lakh equity shares and 150 lakh loan, the amount is 9.58. EPS is 9.58. And in the last option, that is 100 lakh equity and 100 lakh preference shares, earnings per share gets reduced to 7.42. So if you look at these calculations, for alternative 3, you have got highest EPS, that is 9.52. So we need to conclude that as per the above statement, EPS, that is earning per share under alternative 3 involving equity issue of 50 lakhs and term loan of 150 lakhs rupees, is the highest. Therefore, it is advisable to choose the alternative number 3, having 50 lakhs ordinary shares and 150 lakh term loans. This again tells us one thing, dear all, that the cost of equity is always higher than the cost of debt. Since in this case, your cost of equity was minimum and majority, 75% was your borrowed money, so the earnings per share the earnings for the shareholder has increased and that's maximum in this case. So we are going to choose the third alternative having highest EPS of 